off position. We'll give you uh, the opportunity to speak to any item that you'd like to speak to. Just fill out a form. Um, speakers shall refrain from abusive or profane remarks, disrupt, disruptive outbursts, protests, or other conduct which interferes with the orderly conduct of our meeting. Um, upon completion of the public comment period, discussion is limited to board members and questions raised by the board. Invocation this morning will be handled by Commissioner Barry. Commissioner Barry, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, board members, I apologize. My friend from St. Monica's in Cantonment um, has been uh, has been caught up this morning and will not be uh, will not be able to be here. So, if you might rise and uh, uh, rise and just recognize a moment of silence with me. Okay. And then, if uh, my friend Commissioner May might lead us in the pledge. Yeah, absolutely. Please join me for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> All right, good morning, uh, gentlemen. Are there any items uh, to be added to the, to the agenda? Madam Attorney. Yes, sir. There's a true add-on from the county attorney's office at the request of the chairman. It has been distributed to your workstations. A hard copy has been given to the clerk's office. It is not in civic clerk. You will need to ask if you adopt this into the agenda. You'll need to ask for speakers at that point in the agenda. Okay, fantastic. Uh, Commissioner Bender. No, sir. Commissioner Barry. None. Commissioner May. No, sir. Commissioner Underhill. Nothing, Mr. Chairman. And I have one add-on for my discretionary, which I believe is already uh, you already have the backup. All right, um, Debbie. Nothing. Okay. Very good. Uh, Chair would entertain a motion on the agenda. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Motion and second. Please vote. Okay, the agenda as amended is adopted unanimously. Okay, com uh, Commissioner's form, Commissioner Bender. I'm sorry. If I could just take the privilege, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. I have my summer youth employee, one of my two summer youth employees with us, Jordan Hayes, if you'll wave. Oh, hey, Jordan. He's with us today watching, so I just wanted to give him a shout out. Thank no, you, thank sir. Thank you. Thank you, Allison. Are you enjoying yet, Jordan? Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, it's out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Commissioner Bender. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I um, uh, was was surprised and, and thought it was great to see that the Blue Angels named the first woman uh, FAA 18 uh, demonstration pilot yesterday, Lieutenant Amanda Lee. Um, I know that's a it was probably a great honor. So I know we all look forward to to seeing her uh, in in the jet uh, uh, next year. Uh, want to congratulate her and and uh and everything that comes with that and and know that they'll do a, a great job look forward to seeing the new demonstration team next year fantastic commissioner barry thank you mr chairman perhaps she'll take uh sloan on a loop-de-loop -loop or something <laughs> <laughs> you were you were at the beach the, the the whole weekend maybe you could set maybe you could set that up for us next year okay um thank you mr chairman want to uh recognize uh, some more good work being done by the cantonment improvement committee there's going to be a uh 10,000 pound food giveaway this afternoon at 3.30 in Carver Park. And I want to uh, you know, encourage folks to uh, take part that are in need. And uh, uh, certainly every opportunity <coughs> that I have to uh, recognize the good work of, uh, uh, of unpaid public servants. And they've got many of them out there. They, they've done a great job and continue to uh, do a great job. Uh, you know, I mentioned this a couple weeks ago, but I was very happy to celebrate a 10th anniversary with the group uh, a few Fridays ago. and it's. Uh, uh, it's really, it's really something. You know, if every community had, uh, you know, a dozen, 18, 20 people that were willing to uh, sacrifice of their, of themselves and you know, of their households uh, to help their community, you know, our, our county would look tremendously different. So. It sure would. Thank you, Commissioner Barry. Uh, Commissioner Bender, did you have a double back? I, I, I did. I apologize. Uh, right. I wanted to one recognize, uh, of course, all the EMS personnel and and public safety responders. Uh, that responded to I think it was over 30 car yeah pile, uh, up. pile up that we had on on I-10 uh, Friday evening, um, but also uh, around the same time we had straight line winds come through some portions of of the district, and uh, and so I want to recognize Public Works that uh, responded to a, a couple of uh, trees that were down on the roadway, um, and I think I was able to to locate them. Uh, 
pushing nine, nine thirty, still still cutting some stuff down and, and taking care of uh, some of the limbs that were in roadways. And then um, and they went back in uh, yesterday morning and yesterday some point and uh, picked up some of the remaining stuff. So I uh, just wanted to recognize them for their efforts uh, on, on Friday and Monday. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Commissioner May. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I certainly want to send our condolences to uh, Reverend C. Salter. Uh, had his funeral on yesterday, the uh, former pastor of the First Corinthian Baptist Church, a, a dear friend of my father's and a dear friend of my family, and uh, to his wife and to his family, uh, our prayers are, are still with him. Also want to uh, wish a speedy recovery to uh, one of my dear friends, uh, Johnny Blackman and Georgia Blackman, of uh, gathering at this book awareness <laughs> center. They actually, as uh, Commissioner Beer said, those who uh, give public service. Uh, Johnny Blackman ran the West Pensacola ball field for about 60 years, uh, 70 years, uh, never ever uh, being paid for it. But uh, he's a legend in, in Little League sports, and uh, we do uh, wish him a speed of recovery. And also want to thank our, our staff, our human services staff, everybody that's worked in this summer um, camps all summer, uh, many of our teachers who have come back to work uh, in the great job that uh, Carl and Leroy are doing uh, over at Evanwood and uh, at Brownsville. Uh, I know that summer camp will probably be over before we have another meeting, so we want to recognize them, and as well as all of the uh, people who did the uh, summer uh, employment intern program, not just for, to the staff, but to those who um, directors and managers that didn't mind sharing their skill sets and teaching others and raising up the next generation of, of leaders uh, in our county. We certainly applaud those who did that. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner May. Commissioner Underhill, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as I think everybody is aware, we're coming to the end of my season of service here on this dais, and um, we have three men in, uh, in District 2 who are vying to, uh, to take this chair next. Um, in a fairly rare opportunity, we have the opportunity tonight, the Warrington Revitalization Committee has put together a uh, debate uh, that has all three of them on the same stage. Uh, so a great opportunity to, uh, there's gonna be some hard questions asked. It's gonna be a very um, uh, uh, directed format. It's not gonna be kind of the, the free for all. Um, the WRC leadership are the ones that are going to be asking the questions. Um, I see Chris Kerb giving big heads and up, big nods, uh, stormwater and uh, and streets and all those kind of things. The major issues there in Warrington are going to be discussed, and uh, it'll be a great opportunity to see uh, the different ideas that these three men bring to the table. Um, so I would uh, recommend that everybody in the district, uh, by all means, uh, try to attend and, and tune in. Uh, but also keep in mind, even if you're not in the district, no matter where you are in the county, these one of these three men will be making decisions for the next four years. Uh, that affect your money and your issues in your county. So it uh, should be a great opportunity. Again, that's Warrington Revitalization Committee. They're easy to find on the web and on, uh, and on social media. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, for my part, I want to uh, thank Eric Gilmore and David Torcell specifically. Uh, last week during our meeting on Thursday, there was also a, a school board workshop, and I had spoken with the chairman of the school board, Kevin Adams, who's a friend of mine. And we had talked about the opioid epidemic and the previous week's uh, meeting of the Mental Health Task Force and just the Im incredible information um, that was passed in that meeting sp specifically about what we're seeing as a county in terms of the number of overdoses. And uh, David Torcell was able to make a presentation to the board, which was very eye-opening, and it generated a very good article in the uh, Pensacola News Journal. So I appreciate staff going out and reaching out to the, to the school district. Um, you know, I, being there for many, many years, I, I do have a soft spot, and knowing that some of some of these drugs uh, will n undoubtedly make their way into the high schools and probably the middle schools as well, I think it's important for those folks to realize in real time exactly what the issue is. 5.56 overdoses per day in this county. Our, our, our teams of EMS have, have uh, uh, deployed over 1,000 doses of Narcan just in the first um, you know, seven months of this year, which is incredible, which is amazing in a bad way. So I um, appreciate the team going out there and making that presentation. Thank you. Jeff, since, yeah. since you mentioned that, I, I did see uh, something that was, you know, reported on the esteemed North Escambia this mm -hmm. morning, you know, about our, about our rate of overdose and everything. Yes. Um, which apparently is, is you know, as a, as a layperson, it sounds high, but I'm not in the industry, so, I you know, I don't necessarily know. I mean, everything sounds high to me, but uh, evidently it is extremely high even objectively speaking um eric do you do you mind coming up for a second it would seem 
you know, just based on, uh, you know, there's, there's quite a bit of history now, or there's at least some history now, uh, Allison, related to the <clears throat> opioid settlement. And, I, and obviously, you know, dollars have started to come in, and uh, uh, there's some case law. I don't know how long those AG, that AG litigation had, ha had been on the books. I presume a number of years to, to get to the point that we are now. But it would be surprising to me that, that there weren't maybe some federal resources that might could additionally be tapped to try to quell this issue locally. I mean, you know, when, you know, when, when things pop up, whether it's, you know, you know, Commissioner May, whether it's an EPA issue with, you know, an EPA issue with a Superfund site or, or things that, I don't know, that, that put, you know, that put a community or an area kind of on the, you know, on the radar as being the, you know, the, the bottom of something or the top of something, you know, especially in bad ways, you know, it, it the one thing it might draw is attention. And, you know, maybe there's, uh, you know, maybe there's some, some federal support that we could, that we could tap into to try to help even temporarily some resources that, you know, could be deployed to try to deal with this. I mean, I, I assume at some point in time there were, you know, some resources that were deployed to, uh, you know, to different areas that had opioid epidemics, you know, you know. And we have funding, C, that's coming down. I mean, and we deployed some of that to CDAC. I don't know how much that we give CDAC, and I know we have a committee. I know CDAC received some of that, and we're working with CDAC. Now, they got some directly, or the, they, nobody's gotten any of well, ours so yet, So the right? settlement money has actually not arrived yet. It's not anticipated for it. Well, it depends on who you talk to, but I would estimate one to two more months before any of the settlement money starts flowing, and even then it's going to come in piecemeal depending on which defendant's right. money it is. And it's right, but it doesn't, matter that the yes. money, it doesn't matter that the money's not here, Allison. I mean, the but, plan should be implemented. Yep. And, and, and so, we, we have a crisis, and I've said that a, a long time. So, I mean, the money is coming. So uh, money is CDAC, definitely did, coming. Did CDAC? C CDAC is our named task right. force. Did Okay, but... The, the same way that some, you know, some dollars have flowed down previously, you know, some come to us, other times they go directly to agencies. Has CDAC received direct federal money already? I, not that I'm aware of, but, okay. but what we're Well, doing. I'm on CDAC's board. I mean, that's what we're fund. That, that's, that's our task, uh, to, to get the money. I mean, to, 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 to work with drug rehabilitation. And so what I'm saying, Steve, I, I'm glad you're having this conversation because we don't, I mean, the, we need to kind of come up with a plan because we have an opioid ep epidemic. I mean, obviously, you know, I know we have the pilot program yes. uh, that the CDC uh, through the state, and I know EMS is already working on that. And that's what I was going to talk about. So uh, of nine counties in the state of Florida, uh, we've been identified as a, uh, to, to receive funding through uh, Department of uh, Children and Families, DCF. Okay. Right. And uh, we're so that's we, similar to we what put I was together, saying. No, absolutely. So I assume those nine counties are problem counties. I yes. presume that. We okay. have been identified as one of the nine counties that received that funding. Okay. Uh, we have put together our budget proposal and our plan uh, to work with the Community Health Council of Florida, CDAC, uh, our community partners, and uh, come up with a plan for drug rehabilitation and addiction. And what we're going to do is identify people within the EMS system that are our frequent flyers and do uh, paramedicine. Uh, so we'll have paramedic in a vehicle out in the field and do telemedicine in conjunction with and uh, make sure that they're taking their uh, regiments like they're supposed to and do that face-to-face -face door knock. All right. <laughs> Again, as a, as a lay person, the, the fentanyl issue specifically, is it, it appears to be different. Is it, I mean, is it treated differently in this, you know, in this aspect? I mean, so it appears to be its own yeah. animal that's, much worse than other things. It is more aggressive. So it is, it is a different animal than just, you know, your regular drug out there. When you get marijuana laced with fentanyl, uh, they get Suboxin. Uh, we're looking at uh, treatment with Suboxin and uh, those type of drugs for addiction, so. So, Eric, let me ask a quick question. Stephen, I didn't mean to take the, no, I don't, the mic from you. I'm just kind of asking questions. So, I don't know anything. So, so you have this task force with Community Health, CDAC, and obviously, I guess you would be representing us from the county's perspective. Uh, Chief Torcell has been representing us Torcell. with emergency management with Travis Tompkins as well. So Travis and, and, and Chief is the two that's on that, and they're two city representatives. Yes, sir. So here's what my concern is, candidly. I, I mean, even with the suboxone treatment, I mean, putting all, what type of preventive 
treatment, I mean, the programmatic part of prevention, where is that? Is that a part of the discussion of the strategic plan, or is it all just reactionary? I mean, it, the, you know, there is there is some prevention uh, that they've tied into it, but a lot of it's reactionary right now. We're trying to get ahead of the situation to keep them from being repeat uh, offenders, but there is a little bit of prevention tied in the front end. I don't have the plan in front of me. I'll be happy to sit down and lay the plan out with what the community partners have come up with. Well, I mean, I, Commissioner Barry, I mean, I think that this is an, an important enough topic uh, that we could have it at the community to hold to discuss it. I mean, obviously, uh, even if the money's going, you know, to different agency, ultimately, uh, it's getting there, you know, because of the county, and we should be a part of that conversation. I mean, is, I, it, is it an adult issue, or is it a, is it a juvenile issue as well? I mean, are the, the the overdoses and stuff where we see are we the victims it? where they look like demographically. I, I think we're around uh, 30 to 45. It's wow. actually in the mid range. Uh, we are seeing some younger juveniles, but it's not as prevalent as okay. uh, the mid range. Uh, the, uh, you know, 30 to 45. It's an adult. I mean, it's it's a yes, uh, it's a real adult issue. Yes, not, sir. Okay. Yeah, but yeah. It, it, but prevention it doesn't necessarily have an age. No, it doesn't. <laughs> prevention, prevention. Is prevention. I mean, exactly. yeah, you don't say prevention for children or prevention right. for adults. Right, it's prevention. You're talking about prevention for program, right. but this is the uh, the end result of starting out with a recreational drug of smoking marijuana right. or or doing that. That's just the end result. Right. I mean, so I mean, it's a huge problem. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, you look in Gaston County. I think they had seven deaths in one Nine. day. Nine. 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 I mean, so yes. it is a huge problem. And right. So oh, wow. you have to have some type of you know. I've said forever, Steve. And they've got a fraction, like a, their, their population would be a fraction of one of our districts. Right, correct. yeah, 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 yeah. And, and it's spread out. But I mean, you know, and that's another discussion of our homeless money and those, those other things. I mean, you, you correlate the homelessness, the drug addiction, all the time, and we really don't have a lot of drug rehabilitation centers here in Escambia County. We, we just don't, we don't fund them. And that's when we're talking about the quality of life, that's a quality of life issue as well. And so it, I would be interested to see those proposals come forward. Okay. And I would sit here in Commissioner Barry and petition my colleagues that, that we have to fund it. I mean, it's a, it's a horrible problem. I mean, you know, we can't address homelessness if we don't address drug addiction. It's a holistic problem. It all, it's, it all ties it's together. It, it really yeah. does. So. And we're not going to ever get rid of all the drugs in the world, but, I mean, we can do something to slow it down. Right. We've got the Mental Health Task Force tied in. We've got the Homeless Coalition tied in. It, it's, it is a big problem holistically across the board. What, what are we seeing that for the overdoses as far as death rate? Is it is it 20% overdose death rate? What, I mean, I, I'll have to, call, I have to get that back to you. I don't I, – I, Commissioner Bagash has to put the uh, the saves on the board. We're yep. still looking at that, by the way, trying to we figure got, out. We got to do that because people got to know how many people how, lives we're saving. Right. right. So we need, we're trying to figure that out and trying to what that looks like. So we're working on trying to pull that, but uh, working with the medical examiner, I, I'm pretty confident we can pull those numbers. Those, so. over, those overdose overdose per day figures. I mean, is that composed from? from the three hospitals as well as EMS? Is that is it is there aggregate data that's being collected that we're arriving at those figures? The is over, that just our data? That's just our data. That's just ours. That's just the Scambia EMS. And when we get called out to an overdose and they get on scene and confirm that this was an overdose, it gets a, a quick note in CAD, and that's how we pull those numbers. Uh, so this isn't the hospitals or people walking in, or in, it's just our EMS calls. Family member taking another family member to the hospital, that's that, not being That's not captured, in no, sir. And, and there, I think that it would be important to figure out how to capture that data. I mean, because there is a way in which you can, you really could capture. You may utilize some resources to get it, but right. you could. We could talk to the hospitals and try to get that. I yeah. mean, but it, it, right, it's their data. We're just reporting our data on the dashboard is what it is. Mm. I mean, I think our friends at the hospital would understand this whole problem. Well, they problem. helped us during COVID, and so. We and we've it. helped them through a lot of situations <laughs> as well. So, I mean, I think that they would be open. I mean, I would say to me, I mean, I think the CDC, the ask, from what I understand, was about 1.4 million. I don't. No, I don't go to your meetings uh, from the CDC, but I certainly see, you know, we, we have 10, 18 million in children trust. I mean, if children are living in, in drug infested homes. I mean, the programmatic part is uh, we have a responsibility due to prevention. And if you have that task force, I'm not interested in recreating any other task force or committee, but I would like to see those action items come out of there to focus on prevention with children and, you know, to utilize, you know, this board uh, to be able to seek other funding. I mean, and so I would hope uh, that our representatives on the board would partner with my dear friends over at Community Health and CDAC oh, and come up with a prevention plan. Uh, I'll get and if not, I would, I would ask the administrator to um, have staff put it together because I it's think a they've huge had problem. three or four meetings and they've come up with a plan. I'll get the plan in front of you guys. So, yeah, we don't want to read about it. No, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. 
Thank you, Eric. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. Yeah, I wanted to bring that up because it's it's an important topic and people need to know. And uh, sadly, you know, I saw it every single month when I was on the school board. There's a lot of pot, weed, whatever you want to call it, in the schools. People think it's safe. They think it's it's just a plant. It grows. But nowadays, people are spiking it with fentanyl. So it's yep. just a matter of time till we get a bad batch through our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what, it's heartbreaking. It's, to me, it's a heartbreaking situation. People are so addicted that they overdose. Um, we come out and save them, we being our EMS units using Narcan, and then sometimes the same day after they get out of the hospital or whatever the case might be, they're doing it again. And some people say, well, just let them die. I've had people tell me that. Unbelievable. Uh, Until it hits your neighborhood or your family. Yeah, heaven forbid, heaven forbid it ever be that high school uh, football team or basketball team or baseball team, three or four star players, then I think people wake up. But when you have nine people in Gadsden County in one day, and that sheriff pulled the, he pulled the panic button and they brought in the state. I mean, that's a very small county. Absolutely. Um, I have some dear friends over there. Yeah, and so uh, it's something we gotta keep talking about. Whatever resources we can bring to bear on the problem. You know, when we talk about addiction and stuff, it's a, it's a, it's a big problem. Some people won't get the help that they need mm -hmm. and they'll end up crashing in the wall and dying of an overdose. But and, and you're right, and, and Jeff, I'm glad we're having this conversation because we can have a million and one committees, you know, have all type of conversation, but if we don't put resources to it, I mean, nothing's ever gonna happen. Correct, and so, I mean, so we need to do that. I mean, we, we, you know, all these grand ideas of solving homelessness, I mean, you're not gonna solve anything until you at least address the drug addiction. So, I mean, the money we have, we, we have the opioid money coming in, we have the homeless task force money coming in. Uh, they come with a plan and let's fund it. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, if we save one child, two children, that's you know better than losing, you know. So I would just want to see a plan come forward. Well, and Lumen, one one of the things that came out of the task force meeting, and it hasn't been talked about, but since we're talking, um, is that once someone has gone through an overdose episode and they have to go to the hospital, you've got to get that. You can't do it when they're at the hospital. You can't get do it when they're uh, getting out. But within 24 hours, you've got to have an induction. Uh, the board was a private induction facility where you can get that person into treatment, but you gotta do it, you can't do it when they're in the crisis in the hospital, and we don't have that here. And the other we thing don't. that you mentioned is, we don't have a whole lot of detox facilities. So, so whatever we can do to help with that, we gotta attack it from every angle, but meanwhile, having our team at the school board meeting was important. It generated an article, a lot of people don't realize, think about it, 5.56 overdoses per day, that's just what our guys are dealing with. You add in three hospitals, plus the ones who their buddy drive them to the Hospital. I mean, what's the real number? Seven, eight, ten a day in Escambia mm -hmm. County. That's right. It's a problem. It's a big problem. And I will before I leave the topic. I know we kind of got off uh, topic a little bit, but no, I'm glad you. I'm glad Commissioner Barry brought it it's up. It's a big, it's, big it's topic. A big, it's a big topic. Um, our uh, Attorney General today in the paper has requested federal authorization to label fentanyl as a weapon of mass destruction. It is <laughs> over a hundred thousand people killed in America last year. Think about it. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. If that happens, we will apparently be able to draw down some additional federal resources to attack the problem. But, you know, not to get political, but when our border's wide open and this stuff's manufactured in China and it's being body packed through like Sherpas, they're bringing it across the border and no one's stopping them, that's a problem. That's a problem. That's a federal <laughs> failure on our southern border. And that's what's happening. We're paying the price in Escambia County, Florida. Well, Jeff, I mean, we're not going to get political and have, and have that conversation, but here's the problem. It doesn't become a crisis as long as it affects poor people. It's affecting all yeah. people. So, and when it starts to affect everybody, that's when you get attention to it. I mean, yeah. these, these, drugs, I think we're there. These, these drugs have plagued the urban inner city of, of, of America forever. I mean, you know, we can put it on the border or we can put it on whatever you want to put it on. Uh, but it's, it's there now, and so we got to do something to remedy it. I mean, so when it gets out of the urban core and gets into suburbia, uh, then that's when we have a problem. And as you said, you know, it ain't going to be the basketball player and the football player. It's going to be the tennis player and the swimmer that's smoking a joint that gets laced with fentanyl, and then we'll get an uproar. And so, you know, before that happens, we probably ought to do something. Yeah, I'm, I'm all over it. All right, thank you very much. Debbie, do you have anything? All right, we're going to rock and roll and keep going. All right, proclamations. We have one that we're going to ratify, and we're going to have two that we're going to present. The chairman entertain a motion on the slate. So moved. Second. Motion second on the proclamations. Please vote. All right, the proclamations passed unanimously. Item A, we, ratif we're, we uh, ratified uh, and commended and congratulated Gloria Robinson on her retirement. 
Item B, we are adopting the proclamation acknowledging July 30th as National Whistleblower, Whistleblower Appreciation Day. And I believe Commissioner May has got a presentation to make. Commissioner May, you're recognized. Who's here for the Whistleblower Association? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes. It's an honor to be able to present this uh, as whistleblowers help to create good government. Whereas in 1777, before the passage of the Bill of Rights, 10 Navy sailors and Marines blew the whistle on misconduct committed by their ship's commander. Whereas the founding fathers unanimously supported whistleblowers in words and deeds, including by releasing government records and providing monetary assistance for reasonable legal expenses necessary to prevent further retaliation against the whistleblowers. Whereas on July 30th, 1778, in demonstration of, of their full support for whistleblowers, the members of the Continental Congress unanimously passed a whistleblower legislation in the United States that reads, resolved that it is the duty of all persons in the service of the United States, as well as all the other inhabitants thereof, to give the earliest information to Congress or the other property authority. Whereas whistleblowers risk their careers, jobs, reputation by reporting waste, fraud, and abuse to proper authorities. Whistleblowers of America, located in Pensacola, Florida, provides peer support, trauma-informed perspectives because of psychological harm caused by retaliation. Whereas in providing the proper authorities with lawful disclosures, whistleblowers save the taxpayers of the United States billions of dollars each year and serve the public interest by ensuring the United States remain an ethical and safe place to live. Where it is the pu public policy of Escambia County to encourage, in accordance with all laws and rules and regulations, and consistent with the protection of classified information, in including sources and methods of detection of classified information, honest and good faith reporting of misconduct, fraud, misdemeanor, misdemeanors, and other crimes to appropriate authorities at the earliest time possible. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Board of County Commissioners of Escambia County, Florida, hereby declares July 30th, 2022, as National Whistleblower Appreciation Day, an acknowledgement of the contribution of the whistleblowers to combating waste, fraud, and abuse in violation of laws and regulations here in Escambia County. Board of County Commissioners Jeff Bagosh, Chairman Douglas Underhill, Vice Chairman Lumen May District 3, Robert Bender District 4, Stephen Beer District 5. Thank you for this recognition for whistleblowers of America and whistleblowers of our nation. Um, we have worked with Senator Grassley, who I think most of you know is the head of the Senate Whistleblower Caucus. Um, every year he introduces one of these for the United States Congress to ratify. I think this is one of the first times a county has done the same. So I'm very proud of us and thank you so much for this opportunity. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you for what you do. Next up, we're going to adopt the proclamation commending and congratulating both the 42nd anniversary of the Center for Independent Living and the 32nd anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act. And to do so, Commissioner Bender, you'll be recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Carolyn Morna, how you doing? Good morning. You can see. Uh, I have the Siskiyou County Proclamation. Whereas the Center for Independent Living of Northwest Florida, CILNWF, was established 42 years ago on July 1, 1980, to ensure a cross to service choices in the community were available to people with disabilities, and whereas the Americans with Disabilities Act was passed 32 years ago on July 26, 1990, to ensure the civil rights of citizens with disabilities, and whereas Escambia County affirms the principles of equality and inclusion for persons with disabilities as set forth in the state of Florida's Constitution, Article 1, Section 2, and is embodied in the ADA, the laws of the state of Florida, and the ordinances of Escambia County. And whereas, in keeping with the purpose of the ADA, Escambia County is committed to the principles of universal design in the building environment and the inclusion of persons with disabilities in all aspects of public life. And whereas the Center of Independent Living of Northwest Florida serves the residents in Escambia, Santa Rosa, Okaloosa, and Walton counties 
to bring forth the promise of hope, equality, inclusion, self-determination, and freedom that was envisioned by the passage of the Americans with Disabilities Act. And whereas, both the 42nd anniversary of the Center for Independent Living and the 32nd anniversary of the Americans with Disability Act will be observed by people with disabilities, their families and friends of the Center for Independent Living's Gala of Gratitude and Community Recognition Celebration on July 29, 2022. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Escambia County Board of County Commissioners hereby recognizes the Center for Independent Living of Northwest Florida on their efforts to raise awareness of the rights of persons with disabilities and those who support the goal and mission of the Americans with Disabilities Act. Board of County Commissioners, Escambia County, Florida, Jeff Bragosh, Chairman District 1, Douglas Underhill, Vice Chairman District 2, Lumen J. May, District 3, Robert Bender, District 4, Stephen Berry, District 5. Carolyn, would you like to say something? Thank you very much, uh, commissioners uh, and the community. You know, it, the area of disability isn't one person. It's really all of us. Together, when we work as, as a unit, we can make a difference. So even as we were talking about um, the matters of our community with substance abuse, the substance abuse is usually there for somebody because there's something else going on in their life as well. Now, while substance use is not a disability, a person in recovery who's needing supports can receive services through disability manners. And so just to just be able to think about that a little bit more wider in our communities. Um, the Center for Independent Living, for everybody who's out in the community, we welcome all of you to come to our gala. We're very excited about it. Um, we were supposed to have a, a beautiful gala in 2020. Of course, we all know we were all during a different pandemic at that point with, with COVID at its rampant state at that, at that time. We hope that the 29th will be a way for everybody to come and think about all the goodness that all our essential workers do, which are every person that needs to make sure that we have what we each need to survive. That's food, that's clothing, that's the uh, postmaster, that's everybody that's helping us to make sure that each of us can get what we need. The Center for Independent Living is here to support people with disabilities, to make a difference, to help make sure that everybody's rights are met and that we together can live as a whole community with a W, and we can take care of all the holes throughout our community and our streets. So look at that. We've got our 42nd anniversary. It's 42nd Street. Let's make sure we take care of all those holes in our streets, too, and make sure that we have curb ramps, sidewalks, access points for everybody to be able to participate. Thank you so much again, and we appreciate all that you do as commissioners. And thank you again, and also congratulations to Commissioner Bender on your recent awardees as well from the other commissioners. Thank you very much, Carolyn. All right, next up, did the clerk's office receive the proofs of publication for the public hearings of the agenda and the board's weekly meeting schedule? Mr. Chairman, the clerk's office has received all proofs. Was it, where was it published again? In the Escambia Sun Press. The Escambia Sun Press. Very good. We love the Sun Press. Fantastic. Chair move, move that we waive the reading. Motion. Motion and second to waive the reading. Please vote. All right, it passes unanimously. Next up, that leads us to our public hearing. We have no speakers. Move the 1001. Okay. Second, motion second to move the 1001. Please vote. All right, 1001 passes 4 0 with Commissioner May off the dais. Moving forward, Clerk and Comptroller's report. Pam Childers, you're recognized. I only have one item for your attention and acceptance, and that's the TDT report for June 20 of 22. Thank you. Thank you very much. Move the clerk's report as presented. Second. Motion second. Please vote.
Clerk's report passes 4-0 with Commissioner May off the dais. Okay, moving forward now, we have the county administrator's report. Um, and let's see here. One, two. Anything on the technical public service consent? We have no speakers on the technical right. public service consent. All right. Move the technical public service consent. Second. Motion to second to move the technical public service consent. Please vote. Okay, that passes 4-0 with Commissioner May off the dais. On the next one, we do have speakers on item five and item six, and we are dropping item number four. Other than that, no, no additional speakers. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, would you please hold eight for discussion and separate vote? Yeah, absolutely, we can do that. Okay, so we're, we've got speakers on six. And let me go back here. Jointly move the balance? Yeah, five, the ba five and six we have speakers dropping four and holding eight. eight. Okay, yeah. Move the balance. Second. Okay, motion second to move the balance. Please vote. I've got a frozen screen. Oh, it just went through, Mr. Chairman. Sorry. Okay. Oh, there it goes. There we go. I was wondering why it didn't come. All right, the, uh, the balance passes unanimously. That takes us to item number five, and we have a speaker, so we'll go ahead and bring him up first. Um, Dan Danforth, you're recognized. Thank you again, gentlemen, for your time. I appreciate it. I only want to speak to uh, our uh, proposal of design as we move forward, and it's particularly to risk management. We're all strapped by budgetary needs, and. Uh, a superior stormwater infrastructure design can offer a one to five cost benefit in our current design, freeing up funds possibly for other public safety sectors, such as the pond we did in Pond 95, a one to five cost benefit there. And so we just handed you millions, literally. If you just relook at a design, and, 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 and Mr. Bagash, I appreciate your feedback. Uh, and, and staff is, is all over the design right now, and I applaud them for their efforts moving forward. And if you apply this from the top down to the engineers, you say, Mr. Engineer, you consider this in this design. That's where it's got to come from. I've tried from the bottom up, engineers up. And with the current and expanding, and if we look at a 2050 model, you know, what, what, what about our water? What are we doing with this water, and how can we better use? Stormwater is a, a critical need. We need to recharge and quantify every gallon that is inundated by our community. We have a model to recharge the aquifers and the pumping charge, which is about, I think, uh, 30 million a day from Northwest Florida Water Management District. We can recharge the aquifers in one day by using this infrastructure. And so I'm gonna be, I'm just about to close here, thank you. Uh, I spent a career in federal assessment. I'm not just a, coming out of a barn. Probably no one in this community has seen flooding on a national level as myself. I've been in 41 states, worked with multiple governors and presidents, and I'm still employed by a federal agency, which I will not disclose. I come from here to you today as a private citizen that saw a better way after returning to the same communities with the same flooding, going to the same Bristol Park or Shrumbrook, Chicago, and then going and having the same hamburger, and I'm saying to myself, what are we doing? And then I saw this product. That was seven, eight years ago. So today I want to tell you that I bring value to this community. We have two hydrologists and we are specific to surface water management. I don't do parking lots and buildings and parking structures. Surface water management, the total water regime, that's us. So my partner is Michael Bateman. He is the state's expert. He is the one who wrote HB 53, which will be coming in for our coastal flooding. Uh, and uh, uh, I ask that you come from the top down in our consideration of stormwater design. What can we do better with water? Thank you, gentlemen, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Chair, would entertain a motion on five? This is the... This is for the, this this is for for the, the landfill. Landfill. This okay, is, yeah. yeah, all right. I'll move it. Good <laughs> all right, we have a motion on five. Second. Motion and second to approve five. Please vote. Uh, 
Commissioner Underhill? Sorry. No, you're all right. All right, five passes unanimously brings us to six. We have got a speaker, Chris Kerb. You're recognized. Oh, boy, isn't this an unpopular uh, subject? Um, I sent you an email on July 14th. Um, basically, we need more funding for flood victims. And uh, Santa Rosa County uh, has kept the same millage rate for 10 years. Um, they also uh, have one of the lowest staffing levels compared to the population. And their level of service represents that low level of staffing. Um, of course, this year they, they, they're getting about $10 million more in growth from new subdivisions. So uh, they said they're going to put $5.5 million into their infrastructure, drainage and roads, which is what we need here, too. Um, When you're talking about increasing or raising a millage rate, actually it's restoration of a millage rate. Um, it's, it's unpopular. People, I don't think people really understand what a mill rate is. Um, it, it's your property tax. In 2006, we had a 8.756 mill rate. And uh, staffing levels were pretty good then. You didn't have a lot of vacancies. Your workforce retention was well. Um, and the county was doing pretty good. That's about a 30% uh, decrease in what we have today. Um, I think that's about, uh, what, $208 million versus $157 million. I may have them numbers wrong, but uh, I'm not an accountant or a financial budget person. but. A low to average income voter depends on a functioning level of service to maintain a good quality of life. A higher income business, a large non-agricultural landowner, are better financially equipped to be less dependent on a higher level of service. In other words, they have money, they have a drainage problem, they go fix it. For the cost of a box of donuts, at least for my single family dwelling homestead exemption, which I'm willing to pay for a cost of a box of donuts, uh, for just a half a meal rate, international paper would pay a quarter of a million dollars. And two boxes of donuts, that'd be a half a million dollars. Point being, guys, is the low income and medium range People, your constituents, they're suffering because of a low millage rate. Now, there's other forms of revenue. Yes, thank you very so much. Like That's you reconsider. Yep, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Chair, would entertain a motion on the uh, certification of the taxable value. Move the item in the affirmative. Uh, a, B, C, and D, and E, and F. <laughs> thank Sorry. you. Motion is second. Please vote. Uh, Lumen? That's all right. All right, that item passes unanimously. That brings us up to the county attorney's report. I'm sorry. Did I, oh, I'm sorry, item eight, Commissioner Andrew. Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you for uh, uh, holding this for a discussion, okay. a separate vote. Um, I would ask that my peers uh, recognize that even though it was brought before us by a very powerful person in the community and lobbied for um, a half a million dollars going to Yachtsman uh, for the um, uh, Cup, for the America's Cup to be here in town um, is, does not, there, no analysis has been done that shows that that would in fact put heads in beds. Um, we're a community with so many needs that a half million dollars going to Yachtsman seems, uh, uh, it's just beyond, beyond something that I would be able to support. Um, if in fact we have a half million dollars available uh, to spare for that kind of thing. Uh, Commissioner May, can you imagine what a half a million dollars spent in, uh, in Warrington or in Brownsville 
on youth sports in the off season would do for our businesses um, in terms of heads in beds and, uh, and, and you know, butts in seats in our restaurants uh, during our off season. That's what the TDT was created to do. That's the appropriate spend of the TDT. The idea that we as a community with all of our needs would spend a half a million dollars to support yachtsmen um, you know, that are here in town is, is just, it's not something that, uh, that I think would be explainable easily to the average population that I represent. So I'll have to vote against this one. I will, uh, so I move that we, um, uh, sorry, took my glasses off. <laughs> hmm. Um, so I would, I would move that we, uh, do not accept the recommendation from the tourism development council. Um, and in fact, send it back to the TDC for reconsideration, uh, and present us with a solution that is more in keeping with the, uh, the laws that created the TDT and also more in keeping with what is best for our community as a whole. That's my motion. Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll second it just for, for, just for a discussion. Okay, and, we have a motion and a second. You recognize? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And Robert, you serve on, is that no, you, I Jeff? Do. Jeff. I do. Uh, and, and, and obviously, you know, if it's been vetted at the TDC, I mean, we typically support it. Uh, I do candidly have some reservations of a half a million dollars. Uh, I, I will, you know, if that's the direction in which the TDC and you're going, I would support it. But I, I, I certainly uh, would hope that the TDC would recognize, you know, the, the diversity of, of the portfolio in, in, in being inclusive in, you know, events as the commissioner just said. And, Places like Brownsville and and, and, and and sporting events that or or just quality of life or, or events that bring about quality of life and so, um, I obviously you know uh, it was brought forth and I have a great amount of respect and admiration for Mr. Merrill uh, and I I would assume Jeff that you guys have that did the analysis for the ROI in terms of bringing in the taxes but I would hope that you know we would certainly. Uh, use this as a precedent uh, that you know there are going to be future asks to the TDC, and uh, I would be very disappointed uh, if those um, asks were not you know acted upon you know for for the entire community uh, in terms of those dollars. So well, I, uh, I certainly agree with you. Uh, you know, I, I I'm very supportive of of the bringing the sailing here. I think that it's going to open up a lot of opportunities. But I also agree with you know doing things that, that bring sports tourism into areas of the city that perhaps are underserved, like you mentioned, and uh, doing other things as well. The only thing on this item, and we did we did discuss it at length, and I there was a separate committee of the TDC that uh, put it together, and um, the only thing I'm concerned about, and Stefan, if you'd please come forward uh, so we can, uh, wait, oh, there he is. All right. Um, the only thing I'm concerned, and Allison, I'm going to bring you into the discussion as well, because I'm supportive of it, but I just want to make sure we're not abrogating our, uh, you know, or delegating too much of, of what statute dicta dictates to us, because it's my understanding the TDC makes recommendations to this board, and this board is the decider, and it looks like this proposed rule, I have no problem with the percentages, I have no problem with any of that, so flips it around and, and puts us in into a position where we have to make requests to them to allocate funds. Um, would anything that we do today uh, remove the power of this board to make the final determination based upon what you've seen with this backup item. That's a question to you, Allison. I think you have the discretion to do it the way it's being proposed to do. But if we vote to do it that way, are we voluntarily giving up power to do it the other way, to say uh, we, we take your recommendation, um, but we're going to move in a different direction? It appears to me we have to make a supermajority vote and we have to ask permission of the of the team. Are you reading what, I, what yeah, I've looked at? I don't see that it's a, a problem. Stefan, you want to weigh in here? So, um, Allison, so basically um, the way that, uh, let's say for future access of those reserves, so where it would be that uh, the county would make a request of the TDC to, to uh, access those funds for whatever purpose um, that we thought uh, was a good idea, then it would uh, require a particular majority from Super the Super majority vote. From the TD. C. Oh, no, majority vote of the TDC, and then, and then a super a majority correct, vote. Correct, correct, of the of board, board. To, to make that allocation. If you want to set it up that way, you can. 
But I mean, if, if we vote to do it that way, we, I mean, and something comes up and we want to do it. And I don't the TV's, know why you would want to do it that way. Well, that's exactly my point. <laughs> I mean, that's that, your that's why call. We're, that's why we're having a discussion. Yeah, I mean, that's having. an unusual way of tying I have no problem hands. with the percentages. You're I attaching no strings to yourself that you don't have to attach. Correct. But you have the discretion to do that if you wish. Okay, so uh, at this point, we've got a motion to drop the whole thing, right? Is that what your motion was, Doug? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. The motion is to uh, to decline their recommendation and kick it back to them for further discussion. Okay. And we have a motion and a second on that. Um, Commissioner Barry and Commissioner Bender. Commissioner Barry. Uh, Jeff, I mean that's <coughs> the specifics. The specifics of the of the proposal, I don't, I don't have an issue with. I mean, but the supermajority. I mean, Allison, the supermajority related to real estate above above uh, appraisals. That's a that's a statutory thing, is that correct, or is that a policy? No, we have we have memorialized that in our ordinance. You okay. are legally obligated to follow that. You cannot waive your own ordinances, so that is why you have a supermajority when you go above appraised value. All right, that's the that's the only reason that's in place, and that's the correct. only but that's the only issue we have a supermajority. Frankly, that referenced. came out of the 2002 um, issues yeah, that okay. we were encouraged to beef up our real estate ordinance. Okay. There's no there's no other references to supermajority anymore. I know there have been in the past. There's not any more the, right? the only other thing that I can think of is there is some there are some things related to some of the tax tax issues. Um, I believe the fifth cent had to be done with the supermajority. There's also something regarding the fuel tax that does require a supermajority. That those are both in state statute okay. that you can't waive. All right. I you know I don't have any. I don't have an issue with the financial part of what we're, of what their what the plans are. Um, um, however, you know, codifying something else that's going to require a supermajority vote of this board, I'm not interested in taking on. Yes. Uh, that's really the only part that I have an issue with. If I don't know if um, you know if we would make an edit to it and send it back, or just send it back with that feedback. You know, I guess uh, How we'll see we... what Robert and what, and what you think, okay. Jeff. Yeah, because Stefan and I had discussed it. Well, I'll hear from Robert first, and then Stefan and I will talk about the, the recommended edits that we could make to make this palpable so we could pass it. Robert, you recognized. Yeah, I was going to say, I think the, the first four line items is, is what we're actually probably voting on. The the question about the America's Cup, Yep. that was already, we've already voted on that and, and given that to them, so I yep. don't think this is an additional. Any additional will be in, in out years, so this is not awarding them five hundred thousand dollars today. We've already done that. We've already done that. This is just coming out of. This is just reserves. In, right. in problem. This is reserves. It's just reserves, and it's just we showing. really wouldn't. We would be taking TDC recommendations anyway on reserves. I mean, it has to be spent on well, tourism. Should, I mean, my comment would be is that they have this reserve policy, but we also set the budget. So if you know, we can always allocate more for for something that if we don't. Well, that's where things get tricky because under this new policy that we're about to adopt and vote on, we would have to request their permission. That's, that's if we use the reserves. That's right. I'm saying so the following budget year, we have control of the budget. If we ask permission. So you have to read it. Stefan, how would you, we, we discussed this before the meeting. So your recommendation for how to fix it so that the board has the final. Obviously, we want to we want to show the, the TDC a lot of deference, right? They're the experts. and. They, but at the end of the day, this board has to control the final say. That's my opinion. So what would you what would you say as an edit to this that would make it palatable? And that would what I would say, Commissioner, would be that would be the the additional language. Um, you know, if you don't want to do the super majority, just just a majority of the board uh, to to support access to that, and then just you could add some language where uh, the BCC has final approval, some something to that effect. And and Jeff, if if I may, uh -huh. you know, I was uh, of course. Uh, made the motion to, to request the audit of the funds Correct. and uh, you know I was uh, able to stand in front of that board and say hey anytime we've we've used funds for projects for BOCC projects mm -hmm. we've come back to the to the TDC board uh, to seek their approval before or, or we I think we had them ratify it one time but mm -hmm. you know when they help pay for the the bridge yeah, uh, repair when that came in high uh, we went back to the TDC and asked those for those funds and they approved it and then you know so um, you know, I, I, you know, they raised a lot of questions during that time period about us spending money that hadn't come in front of them, which right. I, I can understand. Um, 
Well, we have to work in conjunction with them, right. Robert. We, I, I mean, I, I, the only thing that concerns me, because I appreciate all the work that Shirley Cronley put into this and her committee, and I support it. The only thing I don't like is the mechanism where we have to go ask them permission. And then we have to hope that they vote for yes, and then we come back. And then the way they kind of tied up the fifth cent, we have to make sure that we're crystal clear that that fifth cent money, that was the deal we made. They got the first year of it. But then every bit of that gets set into a lockbox to we determine what we're going to do with our civic center or our sp sports tourism facility. I don't think that's clearly delineated the way this policy reads. Which maybe. hopefully is a discussion that will be had relatively soon. I mean, there's yeah, yeah. on that fifth cent. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, so as you, know, as you guys know, I brought it about five times to this board. So, Jeff, we've never been you, able to get anything done. Jeff, so just point of clarification, you're saying when we get ready to build the sports arena, we would have to go to the TDC to ask for permission. What are you saying? I don't believe, does that apply to the fifth cent? See, here's where we got to really, the details matter right now. Correct. So, so the board could potentially exclude the fifth cent from this policy if the board wants to maintain uh, the, fifth, the fifth cent. Uh, levy. That might solve the whole issue. Exclude the fifth cent, r r uh, take the language out about the supermajority. I can live with everything else. Okay. What about you, Steve? I think that still shows a tremendous amount of deference to them Absolutely. on the first four pennies. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I'd, I'd be all right with that. The chair would entertain a. Uh, well, we got a motion on the floor. How do we want to just? I'll, 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 I'll withdraw my second. Okay, all that's, right. That's where y'all going. Doug, do you want to change your motion around? Uh, no, I think that's still the right thing to do. I'm very. I mean, the the fact whether <laughs> whether we like who the citizens have put here at a particular time, mm -hmm. uh, and whether when it, whether anybody else likes it or not, we are the only five people in this county um, that represent the people, and. You know, the way that the authority flows to us and responsibility flows to us uh, from Tallahassee, it really makes it, I think, inappropriate for us to abdicate that uh, uh, that final word on anything. Um, True. And uh, you know, because uh, morally and ethically we cannot. So, uh, you know, I, I don't think it's a. I think it needs to go back to them for further discussion. Uh, you know, I, I don't. Uh, I realize that that may not be the, uh, the the will of the board, but um, certainly that is my motion. And okay. uh, with the second fall, uh, failing, um, then if it fails for lack of a second, that's fine. We're still uh, documented the conversation. Okay. So Lumen withdrew the second. Is there a second to Doug's original motion? Yeah. I'm, uh, so we have. We're changing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's the, fine. Is there a motion? Yeah. I'm, okay. Doug's original motion dies for lack of a second. All right. Now, is someone going to be willing to make a motion uh, separating the fifth cent from this policy, and also re re removing the requirement for a supermajority when we make a request from the reserves? I believe those two items solves the issue. If someone can make that motion, the chair would entertain it. Or, or a different motion. Is it good enough for me to say that, that would be my motion with those two, those two uh, edits. Absolutely. I can pull in Commissioner uh, Burgosh's comments and advise that you stated that as your motion. Okay. Do we have a second? Uh, yeah, I'll second. Okay. Now, any discussion on this? Because this is important. Yeah. I, I would just like okay. to Robert? comment on the um, on the America's Magic mm -hmm. uh, item. Um, I know when it came in front of us, I, I mentioned some economic development that it was bringing. But, uh, you know, we have vetted this and talked a long time about what it could do for, for tourism. The the marketing that, that Visit Pensacola could obtain through this uh, sponsorship, um, that the what it does for our area in terms of sailing, how we want to develop that sport uh, with what we have in the bay. Um, so I, I just wanted to, to clarify that, uh, you know, we've had lengthy discussions stating that this is a, a authorized use of the TDT. Um, it is for tourism purposes. It does bring in some, some other things that, of course, is what I was highlighting when we actually took the vote. Um, but uh, ultimately, we're going to be looking to bring sailing events here and having um, a, a noteworthy um, America's Cup contender uh, doing their training here, I think, is a good step in that direction. So, uh, as just as as you know, we have this audit going on, and, and they're looking for things like that. I wanted to clarify on on why um, it had my support previously. Thank you, sir. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Better. Commissioner May. And Robert, you know, I was supportive of you, and and, and have continued to be supportive. All I was petitioning is that you know. 
that we have equity in our distribution of all programs. And I'm, I'm you know, listen, yes, right. it, 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 water sports are very important, but you know, there are some other sports that are very important. And so, I mean, we just, when we set these precedents, you know, it doesn't really matter who's making the request. You know, we should at least consider it. And so, you know, to that point, I'm going to be very supportive. But I would just hope that we would get that same support when things uh, come before the TDC or this board that are near and dear to um, others as well. Yes, sir. All right. So we have a motion and a second, an amended motion and a second. Um, any further discussion on that? All right. Please vote. And Jeff, just to clarify, that is not sending it back to the TDC. No. That is that is just making the we're making those changes. They'll get it back with the changes, right? Yeah, perfect. Okay, very good. County Attorney's Report, Allison Rogers, you're recognized. Thank you, sir. With my add-on, there That's are two oh, discussion yeah. items for your oh, consideration. Excuse the me, wait, before you do, let me read the vote tally. It was a uh, 4-1 with Commissioner Underhill uh, voting against. Sorry oh, about that. Now no, sorry about that. Uh, the first discussion item is at the request of Commissioner Bender. Ms. Do you want me to? Yeah, yeah go ahead. So this is a request coming from the Pensacola Perdita Bay Estuaries Program Executive Director. Uh, there are rules about who and how a request for an Attorney General's opinion can be requested, and they are asking that we act in my office as a liaison with the Attorney General's office to get an opinion from the Attorney General's office about whether or not the Alabama local governments could be signatories on an independent special <coughs> district that they are trying to launch for purposes of the future of the, the estuaries program. I need board direction from you all to be able to serve in that capacity, so that's why it's before you. Robert, is there anything else you want to add to that? No, I was just saying that because this is one of the avenues that we can seek, uh, you know, as, as the recipient of the grant, uh, you know, Escambia County's HR policies are in effect. We go through the HR department. And so in this case, uh, I was asking for uh, this legal memo to, to go through our attorney's office. Okay. All right. Uh, well, the chair would entertain a motion on this topic. If Move the item in the affirmative. Okay. We have a motion. Second. Motion second. Any further discussion on this? Allison, is this a real big heavy lift for you or is this pretty basic? All right. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Please vote. Okay, that item passes unanimously. The next item on County Attorney Rogers' report is at my uh, direction. I've received a number of complaints from citizens regarding Commissioner Underhill and his residence, um, including this morning. I got a screenshot, and so therefore I have asked Allison to add this to the agenda based on the complaints, based upon the screenshotted Facebook post to send a letter to the governor requesting that we look into um, where Commissioner Underhill is living. Uh, the other day at our meeting, this was brought up by multiple citizens, and uh, Commissioner Underhill had the opportunity to describe um, any kind of arrangement uh, where he's living. Is he still representing District 2 and living in his district? He chose not to do that and instead said, well, someone should report this to the governor. Had no intention to do so. Had no intention to do so until I got the screenshot from this morning that's from July 7th, stipulating that there are two days left to clear off our property before the buyer takes possession of Commissioner Underhill's homesteaded property where he lives. Um, and then last night on Facebook, Commissioner Underhill, I don't have the screenshots in here, said that I've leased back the property. Um, and so it's ridiculous that anyone asks any questions about it. But if last night he's saying that, then why on the 7th where they saying he only had two days till the buyer takes possession. Seems incongruent, seems inconsistent. So I just think we need to get to the bottom of it on, based on citizen complaints. So I've put forward, a, I've asked the attorney to draft a letter. We've put it forward. And uh, unless Commissioner Underhill, you got anything to say about this? If not, we're going to the governor with it. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, absolutely. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, no, yeah, 
Guys, do what you want to do. Um, I certainly look forward to an investigation from Tallahassee into what is clearly more of the pattern of retribution um, against me, you know, whistleblowing on y'all's uh, 401A thing. So I don't take the 401A. Well, I know you don't, but you certainly supported what these guys are doing, and in my opinion, it's theft, and I whistle blew no. on it. Everybody I've asked if it's legal. I still don't have an answer. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I have the floor. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so, you know, redistricting me out of my district, uh, taking me off all of the committees, uh, all of the other things that we've done, the censure uh, little foray that we had, mm -hmm. um, all of those really kind of the same, you know, pattern of retribution for what I did of outing this issue with the 401A. Um, I am still, as I said, as you, as you have heard on Andrew McKay and as you have heard, you know, had, had I don't listen to Andrew McKay. Oh, uh, well, uh, he's the only journalist who actually bothered to interview me on the issue. Um, the, uh, you know, the matter is, uh, is very clear, uh, what the attorney said. The matter is certainly none of y'all's business. Um, but if y'all want to do this, by all means, let's ha send it up to Tallahassee. Let's have that discussion. Well, um, why would you have to clear the property if the buyer's going to take possession if you'd already leased it back? That's, that's a, no, are you going to tell me it's none of my business? None of your business. Well, I'm, gonna, I'm still going to ask it. <laughs> well, feel, feel free to ask it. But again, as the attorney said, it's not the business of this board. But more drama, always good yeah. drama to take us away from the issues that we ought to be yeah. dealing with. No but, one's taken away from anything. I'm yep. here every single meeting. I, yes. That chair is empty and I'm sitting here. And here we have, you know, once again talking about the Underhill derangement syndrome that you and Mel Pino have instead of nope. discussing the actual issues that should be before this board. So, gentlemen, do as you wish. It really makes no difference. All right. Anyhow, so I brought this forward, gentlemen, and uh, at the request of multiple citizens now and in the face of looking at something that makes no sense whatsoever, I'd like to ask for uh, a motion on this topic, or I'll pass the gavel and make a motion, but I think we got to get to the bottom of it. And um, any discussion on this? You want me to pass the gavel? Okay. Doug, pass this over to Lumen. All right. I move that we send the attorney's letter along with the supporting documentation from Facebook, the chronology of issues, uh, and let the governor's office look into whether or not Commissioner Underhill has um, vacated his district and, his, and, and, and really by a function of that, by his position. That's my motion. Sorry. Motion a second. We have a motion in a second. Please vote. All right. Motion a second, please vote. That passes four in favor with um, Commissioner on there. Okay. All right, not surprising. Empty chair. Well, maybe he ought to go join the whistleblower since he blowed it such a good whistle. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Anything, uh, items added to the agenda? Uh, I believe I had one item, but it was already disposed of. Any other items added to the agenda? Any announcements? Any other business? Thank you, gentlemen. We're adjourned.